So today I'm going to talk to you about one of our um, key stars, right, and of our event. These are the the CMAC cells that you have been hearing a lot. And our approach to overcome one of the most important challenges in soil production, that is the Pierce virus isolation and culture. So um, to make a little bit of history, we know that the Pierce virus is a really um, devastating disease. And I believe that one of the uh, important uh, causes that have uh, hampered the development of new technologies in uh, the diagnostic part and vaccine production is the restricted options for culturing the, the virus. So far, we only have two different cell types that are used for the virus isolation. Uh, these are the porcelain alveolar macrophages and the cells line derived from green monkey kidney cells. The, uh, both of them have used for growing sample, uh, growing the virus from clinical samples. Uh, the, na the PAM cells being the natural permissive uh, host cells, they are really good and, and, and their job, but unfortunately, they show big uh, heterogeneity in the population, so there's no consistently uh, uh, consistent um, uh, effective um, uh, isolations. And then also the amount of uh, cells that we can obtain from uh, routinely, it's not good for doing viral studies or commercial vaccine production. On the other hand, we have um, the non-porcelain permissive cell lines, such as the Mark 145, that are widely used in diagnostic and commercial production, uh, vaccine production. But um, these cells, because of the uh, phylogenetic origin, the different phylogenetic origin, the growing the virus. Uh, on these cell types can have an impact in the antigen quality. And we believe that this could be because of the different glycosylation pattern that the virus could have uh, growing um, on this, and that will impact in the immunogenicity of the antigen. Uh, additionally, when we use the MARC cells for isolating samples from clinical uh, outbreaks, the percent of uh, success rate is not as high as we'd like. So then uh, we had this challenge. Why um, don't we, uh, cannot we develop, uh, sorry, a cell line, a macrophage cell line that could allow consistent growth of the virus and be helpful in research in developing research, new diagnostic tools, and vaccine production. So we um, took this challenge, and um, at the laboratory of Federic, uh, Dr. Federico Zuckerman at the University of Illinois, he is a professor and researcher over there and founder of uh, the Aptimium. We um, develop, uh, we focus on the development of this technology. And from uh, fetal lungs, we isolated a cell type that had similar phenotypic characteristics of a macrophage. After months and very hard work in trying to keep the cells alive, optimizing the uh, medium to grow them, we were able to establish a non-transformed porcine alveolar macrophage cell line that grows strongly in the presence of the macrophage colony stimulating factor and is capable of growing up to 75 passages without significant changes in their ability to grow the virus. So this was really, really, uh, 
exciting for us because uh, it opened a uh, uh, new possibility on the ability to grow the virus and to address the problems of uh, peer isolation. And not only that, it opened also the possibility of a new platform for commercial use in uh, doing uh, new vaccines, on, uh, providing a new alternative for vaccines. Uh, now uh, the cells are uh, patented here at the, in the U.S. in other countries. And we are obviously, now I'm going to share all the beauty the, of these cells with you. They are my babies, <laughs> as you can tell. So um, one of the characteristics of these cells, as um, they are derived from um, macrophage, they show uh, abundant uh, filipodia. Uh, I hope you can see them. And also, they, um, we were able to identify that they express important macrophage markers, such as uh, CD14, 163, 172, cyanide that are important for virus interaction. And also, they express uh, the MHC class 2, who uh, is essential in, uh, for the antigen presentation. These cells also have a high uh, phagocytic activity. When we uh, include fluorescent beads in the culture, after 30 minutes, the cells were able to internalize the antigen easily with no problem. And uh, as a control, we just uh, we included um, a well with sodium acid that is a known inhibitor of, of the phagocytosis, and the process was in, uh, significantly impaired. So they express phagocyt uh, macrophage markers. They are uh, excellent phagocytic cells. And also, they're in terms of size, they are very similar and in cell diameter and volume as the primary alveolar macrophages. So we have in our hands a wonderful cell line um, that is similar to the host where the virus replicates. And we uh, have the ability to grow them in large scale. So uh, one of the characteristics of these cells is that they grow in suspension, unlike other cell lines. So when you have, uh, when you start a new, a new flask from a frozen cell vial, you can see that some of the cells attach to the flask, but most of them will remain in suspension. That's, uh, makes them easy to manage. Uh, as the, as you culture the, that lasts for several days, there are presence of these floating cell clumps that become bigger as the flask mature. And uh, when uh, you have these big clumps forming, that's a good indicator of a healthy growth. The way that we keep the cells going continuously is we feed them with fresh culture medium every three days, three, four days. And when we reach the maximum volume in each flask, we make, a, we make a harvest, we split them, and take just two, uh, half or two-thirds of the volume, transfer that into a new flask, put a uh, fresh medium, and you keep going until you have as many flasks as you can or you want. If we continue this trend of feeding and harvesting every six days, 
uh, from the day that you started that flask, in, in a month, you will have billions of cells ready and begging you to infect them with the virus. Really, they are begging you, like, okay, I don't want to be here anymore. <laughs> uh, so this uh, is a uh, way to scale up the cells in large volume, makes them an exceptional technology for growing uh, for vaccine production. In fact, we recently completed a 100 literal cell batch for this purpose without problem. Um, let me see what else I have to hear. So now let's go to the most interesting part, and I hope this will answer some of the questions you had with yourself. These cells are highly efficient and if it's sensitive to virus, the Pierce virus infection. When we, in this picture, you can see that when the, when the cells uh, were infected uh, with a uh, Pierce virus, after 20 hours post-infection, we were able to detect antigen by fluorescence in more than 90% of the cells. Obviously, this will, uh, this cytopathic effect will depend on the virulence of the field strain. But usually, it doesn't take more than 48 hours to isolate the virus from the ones that you put them in there. So they're, they're really, uh, they are excellent for isolation of the virus. We have uh, also um, done several experiments for grow uh, kinetics in Mark and CMAX cells, using Mark and CMAX cells. And as you, you can see here, in this particular experiment, we infect the cells with a multiplicity of infection of 0 0.1 and do a, a time curve. And you can see that when the virus is grown in the CMAX cells, you, it grows faster and to high titers than in Mark cells. So that means that in between, in less than 35 or 36 or hours, you can have your isolate uh, ready to be uh, put for vaccine production. And take a look at this. This is really, really nice. So uh, while we were de while we were developing the the technology, we uh, had the opportunity to uh, get samples, tissue samples from cases that reach the diagnostic lab, at, and they were positive by PCR, but we, uh, they were not able to be isolated using Mark cells. So what we did is we took PAM cells and the CMAX cells. We run a parallel infection, and the results were amazing. When using the PAM cells, only three out of the nine show cytopathic effect or evidence of growing, of the virus growing. But when we use the CMAX cells, eight out of the nine uh, samples were positive in approximately two days. This was really exciting for us. And we have um, recently had the same results when we have uh, received serum samples. We have uh, about approximately a 97% success rate of isolation in the first passage. So that, that's um, uh, one of the things that amaze uh, us using these cells. And not only that, it talks about adaptation. The virus, when it comes from the clinical samples, doesn't need to be adapted to the cells because it's a natural host cell, right? So it grows in the first 
at mostly, uh, most of the times in the first attempts. Uh, these are, uh, this is another example that the cell line is, uh, allows the growth of contempor contemporary pierced isolates. These are, uh, the, what the graph is showing you is the growth curve or two field isolates that were responsible for very severe uh, outbreaks in South Farms, Illinois. We isolate the, the viruses and then passage, uh, passage them one time and did the growth curve. And as you can see, both of them grew beautiful in the cells and with high tires. So the take-home lessons of the cells, and I hope I can uh, transfer my excitement with using them, is that they are really easy to work with. The process is simple, and they uh, can be escalate. Uh, they can uh, be grown in in huge volumes, making it very uh, promising for vaccine production. Uh, they show, uh, or oh, sorry, they are uh, an excellent substrate for uh, isolating uh, the virus from clinical samples in very short time, and that will enable a faster uh, preparation if you are interested in a, a digenous vaccine, right? And there's no, obviously no need for adapt that. Uh, this is because there is no need of adapt adaptation to grow in the whole cell. Uh, I would say that when you use these cells to get the, your virus, it's very likely that it's going to be identical to the original pathogen because there won't be changes, different passages that will possibly increase the changes in the genome. And also, uh, last, um, this is a magnificent substrate to produce stocks of virus for vaccine production in a short time and uh, getting high titers for that purpose.